station taking action for you. This is ABC Action News. Homes crumbling. A sinkhole swallowing buildings and dreams. It's emotional. I mean, what can you, what can you say? All new at 6, the fear for nearby neighbors who bought their home just one week ago. I mean, you wouldn't wish this on anyone. And a man who lived through this very same thing reveals the constant nightmare that will now follow. It is our big story tonight, and there you go, Action Air 1, live over Lando Lakes right now, where that massive sinkhole is growing at this very moment. And right now, it is threatening a third home, and authorities do not know when it will stop. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Paula Gronin for Jameson. And I'm Wendy Ryan. So breaking news in the last hour, authorities now just releasing the 911 calls that came in as those two houses went crashing down into this huge crater here. Take a listen. There's a sinkhole right next to our neighbor's house, and it's literally eating the house, like, completely. There was, like, a big hole, and then the house is just, like, being tore down. And here is what we know right now. The sinkhole destroying two homes on Ocean Pines Drive, and thankfully no one was injured. Authorities evacuating 11 homes total, and deputies now have checkpoints in place to keep everyone out of the neighborhood who does not need to be there. This is what that home, one of those homes, looked like right before the home opened. And then look at this. This is what it looks like tonight after it was swallowed up. A shattered American dream eaten alive. A new question is now coming to light about the safety of that property. As we first told you on Friday, there was a previous sinkhole there. County records say it was fixed. But as I-Team investigator Adam Walzer found out, the construction company who filed those records is now admitting they never fixed it. Adam? Well, Jameson, they said they didn't have to. All they did was follow an engineer's instructions to stabilize the house, even though there was a confirmed sinkhole on the property. And we discovered documents filed with the county which indicated repairs had been made which, in fact, had not. When the ground opened up and homes crashed down in Land Lakes Friday, renters Amira Rodriguez lost everything. What can you say? I mean, you wouldn't wish this on anyone, especially our neighbors. But engineers say former neighbors rejected a plan to fix a confirmed sinkhole at their home half a decade ago. What was originally recommended was not done, and they did an alternate repair. This 2012 report from MCD Engineering called for $150,000 in repairs, including a process called compaction grouting. The only way to remediate a sinkhole is to compaction grout it, uh, and that's pumping concrete down in, and the idea is to seal the top of the limestone. But the homeowner decided in 2014 to go with a much cheaper plan, proposed by basic engineering, which merely stabilized the structure. The option that they chose, uh, that they went out and... and found somebody to, to provide for them uh, did not address what was going on with the sinkhole. Uh, the, the pin piles uh, did not fix the sinkhole in any fashion, and we see the result of that. The contractor, Helicon Foundation Repair, filed this document with the county, saying they used compaction grout in the repair. Is there a reason it should say compaction grout if there, there wasn't any? If, if there was not compaction grout performed at the site, it should not be on that form. A Helicon spokesperson says a former employee incorrectly filed the document, but he said the county should have caught the mistake. That document went to the county property appraiser's office, so they marked the sinkhole activity as stabilized. The owners listed the home for sale a few months later as a repaired sinkhole home, and when the previous owners sold it, their disclosure form said a sinkhole was discovered and an insurance claim was paid, but not all the money was used to repair the damage. Things need to be looked at a little more carefully when, when, uh, uh, with regards to what remediation activities qualifies to get it, that sinkhole label taken off of it. That's the people need to know. Uh, yeah, that could have cost them by their life if they it, didn't know there was a sinkhole. It almost there. did. Imagine learning your home suddenly lost more than a third of its value, all thanks to one word written on a piece of paper. It happened to dozens of homeowners last month. I-Team investigator Adam Walser finding out it's a response to that colossal sinkhole that was miles away from the affected homes. You can see right here where it's starting to, you know, raise up and it's actually cracked. 
Every new crack in Ashley Boland's house scares her. All over here, it just sinks over to the house. When she bought her home last year, she knew there had been a sinkhole, but she thought it had been fixed. This is one of them um, that's actually hooked to the house. The previous owner and investor had it underpinned. And you felt good about that. And I felt great. That was until last month when she and 83 other Hernando County homeowners got letters from the property appraiser saying he was changing their homes from being considered repaired to being unrepaired, reducing appraised value by 35 percent. Here I am with a 30 year mortgage and I'm paying, you know, all of this money for a home that might not even be structurally stable. The reason for that reclassification, that underpinning technique used in those homes was the same one used on this home that collapsed into a sinkhole in Landa Lakes in July. If you sold that a month before and sold it as a repaired sinkhole, and then the thing, you know, the, the next month that what happened happened, you know, they're going to blame all kinds of people. The man that made the decision to change the classifications, Hernando County property appraiser John Emerson. What's been the, the response from, from most of the people who got these letters? Um, I'm pretty upset. Emerson keeps records on 4,000 sinkhole properties. Many weren't repaired according to engineers' original recommendations. So there was like a conflict. This one says you need to grout. This one says we're going to do underpinning. Grouting involves pumping concrete underground to seal holes in the bedrock, which keeps soil from being washed away. This process continues until the pipes hit solid ground. Underpinning, a much cheaper fix, fastens houses to bedrock with metal pins. So Emerson flagged homes in which subsoil conditions weren't addressed. To retroactively go back and say something is unrepaired when it was repaired and the county accepted it, that seems a little crazy to me. Steve Fingerman is president of Elon Mortgage, which financed and marketed Boland's home. I think it was probably a knee-jerk reaction to what happened in Land Lakes. Records show Fingerman and his business associates hired Mark Richter for more than 20 underpinning recommendations in Hernando County since 2013. You have an engineer that's giving you an opinion that it's going to get stabilized for much less. The state fined Richter last year for practicing architecture without a license. He was unavailable to talk to us. Meanwhile, Emerson is softening the policy change at the appraiser's office. All the yellow ones in here are the ones we have already identified as pinned. Instead of calling them unrepaired, he will call them pinned. Emerson says the market will decide wow. if that affects home values. I, it almost is like I feel like packing my bags up and just waiting for all of this to get figured out. <laughs> Bowen has already hired a lawyer. They're still trying to figure out who they want held responsible. But I don't have anywhere else to go. You know, I'm a single mother. This is, this is my home. I'm my team investigator Adam Walser, taking action for you. Well, it's one of homeowners' biggest fears here in Florida, a catastrophic sinkhole that can take your home or even your life in a matter of seconds. After a sinkhole that the county said was stabilized collapsed in Lando Lakes, our I-team started digging. I-team investigator Adam Walzer discovered safeguards intended to protect the public are the ones falling through the cracks. And it's literally eating the house, like, completely. This 911 call in July, too late to save these Land Lakes homes in the Lake Paget neighborhood. But a professional engineer wants you to know it didn't have to happen this way. We've just been covering up the problem and just ignoring it and ignoring it's not making it better it's making it worse the problem is how sinkhole damaged homes are repaired and the misleading information you get when you buy five years before this video an engineer recommended the house on the right be grouted a process that fills underground holes with cement but the homeowner underpinned it instead which is a much cheaper method then sold it as a repaired sinkhole home the Pasco County property appraiser listed it as stabilized. The underpinning is not really doing anything as far as the sinkhole is concerned. Professional engineer Daryl Haneke says thousands of underpinned homes in Tampa Bay could be at risk. As that soil continues to move into the sinkhole, so goes your floor slab, so goes your interior walls of your house. 
and everything that's inside of that house. The Lake Paget sinkhole destroyed seven homes. For two or three weeks, uh, I got many, many phone calls and many emails. Pasco County property appraiser Gary Joyner says how sinkhole homes are repaired doesn't affect how he classifies them. If an engineer wants to sign off on it and say it's been repaired and file those papers in the clerk's office as a legal document, we're going to follow that legal document. But these legal documents from engineers say the underpinning they recommend doesn't repair sinkholes themselves. The county actually holds in their possession a report from a licensed engineer that says this is not a sinkhole repair. And yet, that's still how it's being transacted. Some local neighborhoods are filled with underpinned homes. This block of Marchmont Boulevard has one of the highest concentrations of underpinned homes, including this one at 4353 and 4343, 4331, 4327, 4321, and finally 4320. Records show nearly 30% of Land Lakes homes listed as stabilized were underpinned when the original engineer recommended grouting. You know, people rely on what the county records at least imply. Helicon Foundation installed the pins at the Lake Paget home. After the collapse, the company's owner, Jay Silver, issued a statement saying underpinning is not a sinkhole repair and that the property appraiser website listing it as stabilized is very misleading as well. But an investment home Silver bought and underpinned and then resold was categorized the same way. Haneke conducted the original investigation on that home. Underpinning would, would, would begin to do justice to what would be required to repair that home. You wouldn't put your family in that house? Not a chance, not a chance. Silver declined an interview but said he did nothing wrong since he followed the second engineer's plans. That engineer was Oliver Turzak, who later lost his engineering license for violating professional standards on another sinkhole repair job. It's pretty confusing right now. Absolutely, I agree with you. That's why we'd like to clear ourselves a little bit. Joyner says he'd like the state to step in and adopt uniform standards for classifying sinkhole repairs and making information available to the public. We spoke to several legislators who agreed there's a problem, but won't yet commit to a legislative solution. The solution is, is not a good one, but these, uh, I mean, these homes really need to be listed for the purposes of safety, at least, as unrepaired sinkhole homes. We're going to stay on top of this issue. We're looking into how an unlicensed engineer signed off on documents which were accepted by the county. We're also trying to get answers about why landlords don't have to tell renters there are sinkholes on the property. Renters might not know what is going on under their feet. In Florida, landlords don't have to tell renters about sinkholes on the property and that could put your family in danger. But ABC Action News I-Team investigator Adam Walzer is taking action to try to help change that. It matched everything that we ever wanted in our dream home. Randy Mickey and Brandon Powell didn't know there'd been a sinkhole at their rental home until things started changing after Hurricane Irma. This is a separation. The slabs I mean, are shifting and separating and raising apart from each other. Things just started falling apart. Literally, and now it's just a nightmare. New cracks in the driveway. We have five and a half, almost five and three quarter inches there. Along floors, on ceilings, and in walls. We started walking the home, and there are staircase cracks all along the home. Neighbors then told them the house was underpinned years earlier because of a sinkhole. So they asked their landlord. And he's like, the home has been pinned in 2010. The home is safe. You have nothing to be worried about. By then, they were three months into a $2,200 a month rent to purchase agreement. It should be disclosed, absolutely, knowing that we're putting all of this money in towards the purchase of the home. In Florida, you have to disclose sinkholes when you sell a home. But landlords don't have to tell renters about them. <laughs> A tenant was renting this underpinned sinkhole home in Lando Lakes when it collapsed in July. I was unaware until you kind of brought this to my attention, the gaps that there were in the, in the disclosure requirements. State Representative Sean Shaw says those gaps are unacceptable. Wouldn't you want your family to know? I mean, I'd ask the landlord that. Wouldn't you want your family to know if they were renting a home where sinkhole activity was taking place? Yes. You can't answer with a straight face. Anything other than yes. But thousands of Floridians who currently live in sinkhole rental homes may not have been given that information. They're saying that um, 
they need to fix the home. We showed Joe Woolsey a sinkhole engineering report from 2007 that recommended grouting to repair his Pasco County rental home. But records show the house was never fixed. That's a shock to me. Did not know nothing about that. Some renters in this Tampa condominium complex didn't know they lived over sinkholes until repairs started. I wouldn't have moved in. No way. Not risk my family, not risk myself. The Wintry apartment complex in Port Ritchie has documented sinkhole activity at three buildings. Did you know there was a sinkhole here? Absolutely not. Mostly you find the majority of people here are disabled. They couldn't get out very fast. No, we only got one way in and one way out. The property manager didn't return our calls. Neither did the administrator at the Golden Sunset Assisted Living Facility in Newport Ritchie where records show sinkhole activity as stabilized. Meanwhile, Brandon and Brandy moved out at the advice of an engineer who inspected the home. We don't feel safe in the home. They now face eviction. I fully intend to file this as legislation. While landlords aren't breaking the law by withholding that information, Representative Shaw hopes to change that by sponsoring a bill to protect future renters. When you're signing the lease, somewhere in the lease, if I get my wish, there's going to be a disclosure if there was a sinkhole there. I'm I-Team Investigator Adam Walser, taking action for you. For months we've been reporting how sinkholes, if they're not properly fixed, can put lives in danger. State law requires engineers to plan, oversee, and inspect sinkhole repairs. But I-Team Investigator Adam Walser has learned Pasco County officials accepted multiple reports from an unlicensed engineer and an engineer with Alzheimer's disease without notifying homeowners. Yeah, they were here for a while. Uh -huh. Jim Brandenburg says he knew Champion Foundation made mistakes when they repaired his sinkhole home in 2015. When they lifted it, it shifted over. But he didn't know Champion hired unlicensed engineer Oliver Terzak for the job. I've never met him, no. Terzak oversaw more than 200 sinkhole repairs for Champion before the state took his license in 2014. The Board of Engineering disciplined him for flawed plans, shoddy work, and failing to do a final inspection for another Champion repair at this home. I want to see if we could talk to you. Would you uh, talk to us then about uh, some of the sinkhole investigations you've done? We don't do any. You don't do any? Nope. But Pasco County records show Terzak oversaw more than half a dozen sinkhole repairs after he lost his license. Like that one in 2015 that, uh, that you were the engineer here? Until you brought it to my attention, I never heard anything about this guy. State law requires that engineers submit sinkhole repair documents to the county, which become public record. But Assistant Pasco County Administrator Don Rosenthal says his staff doesn't inspect sinkhole repairs. The county has no liability for anything like that. that. That's why you hire an engineer and you rely on an engineer's stamp. It's basically the engineer's stamp that is the public safety net. Yes. A plans examiner became suspicious of Terzak after Terzak submitted dozens of plans signed and stamped by retired engineer James Tippins, who family members said had dementia and rarely left his home. County records show Tippin's stamp appeared on dozens of building permits and hundreds of inspection reports. The sheriff's office investigated and determined Tippins didn't do the work. Did it concern you that your employees accepted hundreds of plans from this guy and, and never saw him? No, because that's an engineer's stamp, and the engineer has a responsibility for making sure that, that the things are things are properly done. The report says that within months of those reports being filed, Tippin's mental capacity was diminished to the point that he was moved here to the lockdown memory care unit at St. Mark Village. His family turned in his license when they learned his stamp was being used fraudulently. Did you think that it might be a good idea to pick up the phone and call these homeowners and, and tell them, hey, this guy had Alzheimer's? Not really, because my house, I mean, this is all that I have. This is my retirement. I put all my money in it to fix it and only to find out that it might not even be certified correctly with a guy that might have Alzheimer's. We notified the sheriff's office, we notified the engineer's board, and we notified our inspectors. But not the homeowners? Not the homeowners. That's a civil matter between the homeowners and the people that they pay to do the work. Are you kidding me? We need to know. We're the people living in these houses. We're the people that could have the house that could collapse. We contacted Champion Foundation, but they didn't respond. Terzak denied doing anything wrong. You were listed as an engineer. No, nope, not true. Rosenthal says he's not worried. 
The county shows the homes as repaired, even though a licensed engineer never inspected them. And apparently it worked because we don't have a lot of incidents of where the homes fell through the ground. The case against Terzak was closed, and he was not charged with the crime. I'm very happy and proud of our staff and that we did catch this thing. and We were the first ones talking about this. But Brandenburg says he's upset the county never told the people the building department is supposed to protect. The homeowners don't count. Just... You're the one living in the home. Yeah, but... Don't tell us. That's ridiculous. I'm my team investigator Adam Walser taking action for you. Well, tonight in ABC Action News, I team investigation helping inspire a proposed law requiring landlords to tell renters about sinkhole activity. State Representative Sean Shaw filed House Bill 905 last week. The I team uncovered thousands of Floridians living in homes, apartments, and even assisted living facilities where sinkholes have been documented. Currently, landlords are not required to disclose that information. The underpinned home that collapsed in a sinkhole in Lando Lakes in July was a rental home. If legislators approve the law, it would go into effect July 1st.